Uh, I want to start out by thanking several people without uh, whom we would not be able to do this. Um, and first of all, I want to thank the Most High, Tatanzambi. I want to thank Simao Toko. I want to thank Prophet Kimbangu. I want to thank Isaiah. I want to thank the entire Bantu Tokoista Cape Town family, uh, all the people we interacted with and met there who made this possible. Uh, thank you very much. And that includes even the little children and their families. And like I said, everybody at that congregation. Also want to thank Brother Benika, uh, Sister Speci, my brother Nick here, and also those of you watching and also Sister Laura for keeping the ship afloat while we've been up and about running around the planet. Um, I also want to thank you uh, who are here online uh, with us in this group. I also want to thank those who come to this channel to watch our subscribers, our viewers, and even those of you who send us comments or messages online. Thank you. All right, now let's go and get started on today's topic. And today we are going to be talking about Mamri. So this is an image of the southern part of Africa. You can see these various countries here. You see Namibia, Botswana, South Africa, and you see the red dot there, that is Mamre in Cape Town or close to Cape Town. This second image here shows you um, Mamre about, you know, 60 kilometers or 55 kilometers north of Cape Town. That is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Mamre, uh, which is found in South Africa. So the word Mamre means strength or fatness and just think of a place with plenty think of a place that is lush green fertile good environment for people for animals to thrive the sign that you see there is actually a picture that we took while we were driving into Mamre. you get to see that later on and brother nick will tell us a little bit more about this Thank you. Uh, just as uh, a forethought, it's, it's important as leaders and everybody who's aware of this, this information to empower just the people so that the scriptures align with what we know on the ground. And in this presentation, uh, we are going to explore the location of Mamwe, significant uh, aspects about it what we saw and also what is there with scripture so that it aligns. It's important to identify the location and the important points within the scripture. Thank you. All right. And so just giving you a quick introduction on three key points we know about Mamre. First of all, it's the location where Abraham made a covenant with uh, the Most High, and the Most High promised to give him many children. It was while Abraham dwelt in Mamre that the Most High also promised him Canaan, or the promised land, you know. Uh, it is also the ground, uh, the burial ground that Abraham bought and buried his, his wife Sarah is in Mamre. He also bought that burial ground uh, for his family, uh, and others like Jacob, um, his grandson, were buried there. It's also an inheritance for Jacob. Uh, when, when Jacob was um, having a little tug of war with Esau regarding the birthright of Esau, this included a lot of the land, and especially the land in Mamre. So it was an inheritance for, for Jacob. All right. And Brother Nick will walk us through the next slide. So in order for a location to be considered to be Mamwe, it has to certify or qualify to have certain aspects. One of the aspects, uh, some of the aspects we'll go through today are six in general, but we'll go through one by one in brief. Then you can read more about it. You can take notes, screenshot, or review this later and go through the verses and chapters. So the first point is that 
there must be oak trees, a grove of oak trees. That's not one tree which is scattered, but a grove which means like a small condensed small kind of forest must be mainly in one location. Two, we know that the trees need water, so there must be water. And if you remember from the the, the scriptures, it when the visitors came to see Abraham, the three angels, he said, I'll get some water so that you, you can wash your feet. So water was nearby, whether it was a stream or well, uh, water had to be there because also Abraham moved with his tent and his household and he had a lot of animals and livestock. So we had to get water in the location. The third point is an altar. When Abraham moved his tent and came to Mamre, he built an altar to the Lord. So an altar was made using natural stones and without, they're not carved, they're just arranged but he said he built an altar so he must have gotten them and put them somewhere so we must see proof or evidence of an altar together with the other two points that I mentioned before. Then the fourth point is Mamwe was located in a plain so Mamre must be in a plain location. So the land must be in a plain, not, uh, not anything else, because that matches what is in the scripture. Then fifth, we know that Mamre was a place was a place in Hebron. So Hebron must be not so far away, or there must be correlation. Why do I say this? Because it's in scripture that we are told that Sarah died in Hebron, right? And Hebron used to be called Kijurdaba, and that was the previous name. So now we must understand that we must have Hebron not so far off, not in the next continent or anywhere else. It must be close by because Sarah died in Hebron but was buried in Mamre. Then six, uh, which is the last point, we must have some evidence of animals because Abraham had a lot of animals. And the, if you read the Testament of Abraham, you will see also that there were horses involved. So we must have so, some testament of a lot of cattle, a lot of sheep. And because this is the fatness of the land, there must be a lot of grazing. So you can't come like with 300, 400 uh, cattle and expect not to have grass or animal foliage. Yes, thank you. Good point, Nick. I just uh, echo on that last one. You know, it says Abraham moved his tent. That's pretty much like Abraham relocated. He moved his people, his goods, everything that he owned. He was moving his tent. It means... He was relocating with his people, animals, sovereigns, everything. All right. So let's carry on here. So this is a map of the city or the town of Mamre in uh, South Africa. And this scripture here talks about that Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah, which is east of Mamre. Uh, that is Abram in the land of Canaan. So when we looked up online, um, for a cave around Mamre, the only cave or anything that was labeled as a cave was on the east side. And it's the one that you see there called Bailey's Happy Valley Cave. Uh, so that's where we set out to go to first. So join us as we ride along, as we're driving into the city of Mamre in the next clip. Why would you have this? This is also what's surprising me. And this, I've seen white people around. Anywhere you see them, just know. <laughs> anyway, and then there's a national park here, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna turn, we're approaching Mamri. Caves 
buses that are east of Mamre. Buses. Buses. to Mamre, keep going straight, because this one is taking us to that cave. I just want you to, to I'm take catching, it. I'm gonna get it. I'm getting Paradise it. Paradise Lane. I'm getting it. <laughs> yep. Look at what they call it. Paradise Lane. Yep. Let's go. They know what they're calling it Paradise for. Look, it's just surrounded by hills. It's calm. Yeah. This is the, the threshing floor that Abraham brought him from threshing floor for something, right? That's a land he bought. Yeah, he bought this land. I mean, the air just feels cool. Yeah, it's like a turn into the left. I think Brother Bonica is going to himself will even be jealous <laughs> when he hears when he hears where we were what all these things have happened how much you can't do with Abraham <laughs> Well, I had seen initially, like Mamri and Elder Headley talking about that. But then now, because we decided we were coming down to South Africa and Cape Town, we started looking it up. Then he got like a week before. Yeah, it was like a week. A week before days, we came. In fact, I was leaving at that time. I was leaving the US. He sends me a message where somebody is showing the scriptures. Um, a YouTube or TikTok or something where somebody is showing the scripture that says Mamre and then east of Mamre is the cave of Machpelah and, and this video that he sends me that's the only cave east of Mamre you get that? it was one of those 3 a.m. messages that he gets revelation so we're gonna go in here yep this is very interesting Even these guys would be shocked to see us here. <laughs> we got our brothers here. Johan Street. Johan Street. Or oh, Johan Street. <laughs> Look at that. Those buildings. Is this school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Primary. Primary school. Primary school. Why would they set up all this here? It's, it's, it's some place you'd consider inconsequential. So okay. would you set up? So let's keep riding along. I get you. Hmm? You get me? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Why would you make a whole town here? Yeah, mm -hmm. why would you make a whole town? Like in the middle of nothing. Stop, 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 stop. Sorry. Come to a stop. Add up, man. Think about it. 
doesn't add up. So, um, apologize for that. Um, I am actually going to forward it. I meant to stop the video right here. So, this is the backside of that house. And um, we stopped the clip right after this. But uh, I'll, go it, I'll go on from here. Bailey's happy valley came. I think you make a right here. So notice the orange house over there. Um, that's the house. So we stopped the clip there. However, um, this is the house. I actually got this picture online. Uh, we did walk up to the house and there were some people who came uh, and started having a conversation with us. And so we inquired from them, uh, but they told us they closed in December of 2023. They permanently closed. They were using it as uh, an event venue. Uh, you could have your birthday party there, your anniversary parties and things like that, uh, or whatever events you wanted to have. But they closed it uh, in December 2023. Um, which is just about a month ago before we did this uh, visit. So anyway, we asked them about whether the caves that they built on were natural or man-made. Uh, their response was that they were uh, man-made. Um, you can think about, you can think of that however you want to think of it. But anyway, that was their response. Um, so given that we couldn't go in and tour Happy Valley Cave, uh, we moved on. And so uh, we drove to the city uh, gates. And that is what you see in this next image. That is Sister Speci there on the left. That's Brother Nick. And that is myself. And yeah, welcome to Mamre. Now, after this, um, we're going to drive into the city. Uh, but first, I uh, have some screenshots here that just show you and some images that show you some of those bullet points that Brother Nick made at the beginning. And the first one is this one that talks about the Most High appeared to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. You see that screenshot? That is from another point uh, of view uh, of the city of Mamre. It is clearly in a plain, flat as can be. And this is another shot again, that is Mamre. And it's just in a plain, again, um, very flat area. And Brother Nick uh, got this from some University of South Carolina website. And this shows a picture of Mamre, I think in the 1800s, um, around 1860 or thereabout. Um, Brother Nick, are you still there? Um, you want to comment yeah. on this? Yeah, uh, just two comments uh, before this. Uh, it would be good for people to go on the Happy Valley online and check out the caves from their website and see their gallery and make a judgment also because you get to see an image of the inside because they're taking photos from previously. And now that we are not allowed to so remember the Happy Valley in Mamre, you can also check them out and see the caves. So this is one of many photos, the one that you see in front of you. This is uh, based on an archive from the Moravian church, which was there from 1600s. And this is one of the photos they took of the plane from a higher elevation. And you can see definitely it is a plane. And you can see a lot of green, a lot of vegetation in terms of trees. So what we were talking about, the trees, you must have vegetation for animals. Uh, the trees need water as well. So it starts putting together the meat to the bones. So yeah. Yeah. 
And here's another image um, in this one. Nick, talk about these guys and what they're doing. So these people are washing sheep, I think for purposes of uh, controlling the heat and things like that. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to wash sheep, you must, they have a pond. The mm -hmm. pond must have water. You can see the, the vegetation there. And also just think back in one of the statements we said, uh, in order for the location to qualify, there must also be proof or evidence of livestock. This is from 1860 mm -hmm. or so to 19. Mm -hmm. So they already shows you proof of animals. And, and we know for a fact, mm -hmm. Abraham had a lot of sheep. Yeah. So this is one of those proof. But you see, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. So you see the sheep. In this image, they talked about uh, one man who's of European descent and the others to be of African origin. Good so point. It tells you if you go back a few years earlier, you think about Abraham's time, <laughs> he would, it says for itself. Yeah, they would all be probably yep. black people back in Abraham's time. Um, and the water, you know, there's a lot of water for you to be standing on. I don't know if it's a pond, a river, or whatever it is, but there's presence of water, which was something else that you mentioned in the six points. Thank you, Brother Nick. Let's move on. Um, of course, the viewers can always pause and take more time to look at that. So this is a map of what they call the Moravian Station. The Moravians are a Christian group from, uh, that originated in the Czech Republic. I invite anybody to Google that, look it up online. And they spread uh, their wings and established some churches in place like Germany. And some of them from Germany, who are actually Germans, came to this place in South Africa and they started setting up, you know, like a compass uh, in this place. And this is a little map of that compass. So I'm not going to walk you through everything, but you'll see some pictures uh, with some of these buildings and some of these locations. Um, the first one, number one here, there's a shop that is uh, that vertical white structure that you see over there and right next to it there's a memorial plate the memorial plate documents a summary of this station um, that's what i'm going to be showing you next and right after that uh, you will see us next to this water mill which is number two here the water mill and you'll see some other activities that uh, we had over there in this uh, patch of grass or this area so anyway Let's jump, uh, actually, let me mention one other thing. Um, at the top here, you see a cemetery um, and you'll get to see that also uh, as we progress in this discussion. That's a cemetery where the people who are living around here would be buried and so on and so forth. But anyway, let's talk about the next image. So this next image, like it says there, uh, Mission Station, Mamre. This is what was set up by these people. So it says in 1700, the meat contractor Henning, blah, 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 was given grazing rights here in Greenkloof. In 1701, Van Diestel established a military post to protect the farmers from the marauding Bushmen. I think that is quite offensive. I think they should consider changing that from Bushmen and just writing to the Koi Koi or the Koi San, whoever it was that was there. Um, this later became a cattle post of the Dutch East India Company. Uh, I would invite anybody to Google that Dutch East India Company, just like the British East Africa Company, and you will find the history, the dark history, especially about those nations. Um, but anyway, uh, I found it quite offensive that they would call the locals in our motherland uh, Bushmen, Whereas we know in history that it was our ancestors that went to Europe and uh, civilized the, the Europeans, taught them how to have hygiene and other things uh, like that. So I think that should be something we should consider revising on that plague. Anyway, this is just a plague talking about this city. So let's get into this city or this town. Brother Nick, you want to talk about these two buildings? 
Yeah, just to add on from the previous uh, slide, the 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 guy who the mid contractor would not have asked for there to be any more security in, in the 1700s. It was a mid contractor to be given grazing rights, right? So he was a mid contractor. It tells you that this was a very good grazing place mm -hmm. for animals. Otherwise, mm -hmm. how would he be uh, pursuing to supply meat to whoever he was contracted to supply meat to? And two, the person who formed this uh, thing is called Schmidt, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, was a butcher. So after he left here, he went and started saying, can you bring missionaries? But I'm not sure they were all missionaries. Because how does a butcher ask for missionaries? <laughs> anyway. Good point. Good point. All right. So tell us about this. The this. First image. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us the about first this. first image on the left mm -hmm. is from 1712. Mm -hmm. You can see the patch roof of I think what used to be the 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 shop or one of those shops, mm -hmm. and before it became very busy with other buildings. But you can also see the elevation of where the cemetery would be and up there, mm -hmm. because from the Moravian station it's a flat piece of paper, so you cannot see the elevation of the hill. Mm -hmm. So. This is an important part to see how this hill used to be like previously. Yeah. And now where they're settled, there is a plain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then on the right, you see the mission station, which was at the bottom of the hill, or just before you get up to the hill, and you see quite a number of trees, mm -hmm. a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. So it, it does tell you, and these are not just, uh, there are plenty of oak trees. Yes. 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 So that's a good point I'd like to emphasize, especially on this uh, hill-like structure. This is on the western side of this Moravian station. And it's just a little, well, not little, but it's a hill, not a mountain, just a hill. But when you look at present day pictures, like the ones we'll show you in a short while, you'll notice that this has been leveled out. Uh, it's not as steep looking as it was back then. Anyway, let me keep carrying on. So now we are at that water mill that I was talking about. Um, uh, that is just at the front. And this is that greenery or green space that we are looking at. Um, this water mill, notice it, it is a two-story building. And behind it, there's another smaller structure, a smaller building. Uh, this is... I'm pointing out in this image, and you might not see clearly, but as we were driving by and approaching this place, we noticed a gentleman who was just entering the compound. He was just breaching the fence or the opening to go into that compound. And so when we noticed him, by the time I'm taking this picture, he's already down there. But when we noticed him, we proceeded to stop so that we can have a conversation with him in case he knows more about the place because uh, you seem to be a local. Now, Brother Nick, you had an image here that you found. What is it that you saw or noticed about this image of the same water mill, but back then with different people in the picture? Uh, you might be on, on mute. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, you can notice on the front of this image on the right that you have a horse carriage. So it does tell you what you can't have a horse carriage if you don't have horses. Yeah. And two, you can see quite a number of trees around it. And on the image on the left, you can see quite huge trees on the image uh, and some trees on the foreground which are being cut. But yeah. the images on the left are now mature oak trees. Mm -hmm. Evergreen. And you can see these other ones, they were taken probably in a different season, but they're still old trees, but they're, they're, they don't have as much leaf uh, mm -hmm. as these ones on the left at that particular time. Yeah. There's also, if I may point out, this is a four-wheeled horse carriage with three gentlemen sitting, or three people in front of it. That would definitely need horses to push it. But here, we have some two-wheeled carriage and a few horses right next to it. That is the presence of animals that we were talking about before, all right? 
Now, this is where we stopped on the opposite side of the road when we saw that gentleman, and that's Brother Nick and Sister Speci. Uh, I think the building is called Lobensal on that map that they had. And I was the one taking this picture. So that is where I'm standing as I took that picture. This is that green space that we're talking about. The, uh, the man we want to talk about is somewhere near that tree over there. And we'll talk about all these things that are in this image. Let me keep moving. So um, on this image here, I want you to notice, first of all, um, right here, there's an arrow. This arrow is coming from some animal droppings. So there's a presence of animals and the arrow is pointing to a horse. There were actually two gentlemen. One is in a red shirt somewhere on the left of that tree. But two gentlemen who were working with some horses, there actually happened to be two horses. Um, this scripture here talks about, let a little water, I pray, be fetched and wash your feet. This was when the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham and was coming to tell him about uh, that next year they would have a child, Isaac. And he fetched some water. For him to fetch some water, the water has to be close by. This is a stream or a river that you're seeing behind Brother Nick's sister, especially in that man that they saw. And then we have this scripture down here from the Testament of Abraham. And in this scripture, right in the middle here, Abraham said to his servants, the sons of Masek, go to the herd of horses and get two gentle and tame horses. So we see evidence of horses again. And of course, those are animals. It's very interesting that this time when we were here, we also saw two horses right here. Uh, if you remember from the video we watched before, uh, as we were driving into Mamre, uh, Brother Nick noticed some horses and some animals, sheep and things like that. Uh, you can go back in the clip and you'll see it. there were some horses. So this area has animals. We have already seen sheep. We've already seen horses. And here is even evidence today. Uh, we were here in, this was uh, February, uh, yeah, early February of 2024. And there's still animals there and horses. All right. Um, before I go to the next clip, uh, Brother Nick, tell us what happened because you had a conversation, a, long, a longer conversation than I did with this gentleman. Tell us what he told you. And especially, don't forget about what he told you about uh, the graves um, and, and the houses. Yeah, so this gentleman, uh, when uh, I started interacting with him, he mentioned he used to be an old grave digger in the town. He used to dig graves for people. And then he asked him if there are any graves which are very old, uh, not current 200, 300 years, but older than that, 400 years and back, not before the station of King Breton. He said, yes, there, there is one which, which are located behind the cemetery. And then there is another two that one is in town, but someone built over it with a house within the town. So I asked him, and was this one a long time? He said, they did, they did build on this house a long time ago, and now it's been covered within the house estate. So that's one. And then the other one was, it was buried in a sandy area. Mm -hmm. And we definitely know that that's not part of Abraham's lineage because the Bantus or people of African descent would not bury people in sandy places because the grave would be seen. But mm -hmm. just to just to mention, the other older graves are beyond the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So there's one grave grave site in town, but that one has been taken up by private people and they built over it a house, which which is kind of like pointing us to where we had come from, from the cave where they said they had closed and it's a private residence. So that probably might be the location of where Sarah was buried. Good and just point. to add on to the previous the previous slide where you say you showed Lobensal, that, that uh, church 
where we had stopped with the car. It's important to know when you go to this site from uh, USC, uh, uh, the old images, the archive, you'll notice that the church, <laughs> the church was built in a place called Pella. Pella, so as in P E L L A. Pella. Yeah. P E L L A. Yes. Okay. And remember, remember the cave of Mark Pella. Ah, good so point. It just tells you, it's just another hint in, it's within the location. Good point. Good point. All right. So thank you for highlighting about those graves that were built on and could be. What we just saw. one more thing. Yes. It's a coincidence that Genesis 18.4 says, let a little water be fetched so that you wash your, your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And at the same time, we were resting under the shade of the tree. Yeah, actually, before I even move on. So this gentleman... This old man that we were talking to over here, the one between you and Sister Speci, when we drove in and we saw he was just entering the compound, when you talked to him, what was he coming to do in here? He said he was coming, he was taking a walk and wanted to rest under the tree. He was coming to rest under the tree. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Um, and he came specifically to this tree. <laughs> Very interesting. All right, yeah. let's move on to the next video. But before I do that, I want to make sure that everybody pay attention to these big boulders that were put here much later on. It appears that there was some kind of fence to protect this area. Why would you want to protect this area? What is it that is so significant about it? But anyway, let's get into a conversation Brother Nick had um, with uh, this man and hear what he had to say. Long time ago, he used to dig out graves. He used to dig graves for people. Okay. Up there. Yeah. Uh, just tell me what you told me up there. What happened? Yeah, we found him old bones there. Old bones. Yes. Like. Out of, yeah. From the grave, he dipped in the ground. Okay. Coming out from under the ground. Yeah. The bones from the Like uh -huh. very uh -huh. old bones. Very very old. Very old. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened? Other people, some white people. White people. Yeah, they, took away. Uh -huh. they took away the bones. Yeah. <laughs> they, they came like some white people from far away. Yeah, from some white people, some, some, I don't know what they do. Uh -huh. Okay. I think they only take a, put it in a car or in a bed. Yeah. The car. They take away the bones. Yes. Long time ago. Long time ago. Like years no, 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 no. Like when he was much younger, mm -hmm. oh, really? he used to okay. help with like digging of the graves. Oh. And he found some very old oh. bones. bones. But this, some white people yes. from far away came, looked at the bones, took. took the bones, and took them away. And then is that? Is that the last time? That's they... what happened. I don't know what Then what do they put on on top of the? Those they just graves? left it there. They they, just left did they cover the, the grave? They put soil back and then leave it. Yeah, they they, they, they close it with the, with the, with the same sand. Yeah. Okay. With the same sand. Yeah, just leave it. They got all the grave. And where where exactly is that? Is, is up it there? up there? It's up there, yeah. Okay. Up the 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 hill. Yeah. The cemetery over there. You can never look. You go and go around. You can never look there. You can drive up there. Mm. Did, the, did, the, did the graves have any markings or names? The names are on it, yes. The ones they took away? Yeah, the age, the time they were born. Uh -huh. You understand? Okay. Was it, it like it, for it, it, black it, person? It, it's on the cross. It's on the it's cross. cross. Yeah. Okay. And what, is it a big cross or small? No, it's not that I like that. Okay. You can't miss it. Okay. You can see it from far away. And it's a cross? Yeah. And the name of the person is on the cross. Okay. What is bad? Okay. Have you ever heard of any people who think this is a religious site or 
a site of where some people in the Bible are buried. Have you ever had anything like that? Yeah, yes, and uh, the Dominis. Okay. 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 All the people who are staying in Mamri. Yes. White people was coming from there, from Germany. Yes. They come to preach here. Okay. And then they were staying here. They were staying in this Mamri. building. They came as missionaries, specifically here. Yes, yes. Or from, from Germany. Germany. From Germany. Mm. And they came to preach here. Yes. Then they, 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 stay, they stay here. They were staying here. They, 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 they die here. They die here. Yes. yes. They, they wanted they to wanted live here, stay here, and preach here. Yes. Yes. And they used to go up there. Look at the yeah, forest. they go. They went there. Okay. We'll, we'll go there and take a quick look. Okay. We'll go and take a quick look there. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Brother Nick, are you still there? Yeah. So uh, before I move on, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened uh, with this man as we were leaving? What did he ask so, us for? To, for one, one of the things he mentioned, uh, which, which is when we were leaving, he mentioned those were dry bones, very dry bones. And he told us, how do you distinguish the, the, the earlier aged bones and very, very old bones is the very old bones would be very dark yellow in color. Mm. Mm. So, so they would be really, really yellow in color, dark yellow. So that's how you distinguish like 500 to 1,000 year old bones wow. of, of a past. Wait, then so he hold, asked on. Us, hold on, hold on. Before you go to what he asked us, did you say he said they were very dry bones? Did he use those words exactly, dry bones? Exact words. Those were dry bones. Wow. Okay. Okay. And then what did he ask? Sorry, you're on mute. You said uh, after that he asked us, something um i wait for you to get back yes what did he ask yeah he asked us for some bread okay did he i think i remember yeah i remember him asking asked first for money to buy bread and then money, first, yes. money to buy bread okay and then what what we did we didn't have any money in terms of liquid money because mm -hmm. we were just going back in and so we we said we don't have bread but we have fruit Yes. So I remember you, you went back into the car, got some apples, I think four or four, five apples and gave it to him. Yes. And this is just when we were just getting out of this compound, which is fenced. And we don't know why it was fenced, whether it was for the mill <laughs> or for the trees yes. or for whatever reason that it's fenced. And the, these are old metal posts. They almost look like railway, railway yep. trucks because yes. the way they're thick. Yes. They're very old. So I want to add that uh, as I ran back to the car to look for some apples uh, that we had in the car, uh, another wh a white man who was driving uh, stopped by when he saw me at the road and he got out of his car and came to me and asked me what I was doing there and asked me uh, who I was. He asked me if I was from the province of Hauteng, which is on the extreme north uh northeastern side of south africa and we were in the western cape which is like the southwest side of south africa um i, I presume he assumed i would be from Hauteng because that region has more black people uh, than this region we were in and i told him uh, i wasn't from there i was just visiting uh, this town and i happened to see this old man and we stopped by to say hello to him, find out if he was okay. And that man actually uh, turned out to be, after a little more conversation when Sister Speci approached, that man introduced himself as a minister of the gospel. He said he is pretty much the pastor of 
or whatever title you will not give him, of this mission station, they still operate a church here. Um, and I will just add a few points before we go past this stage. You know, uh, he started asking who this man was that we were talking to. Uh, it caught us quite by surprise that he didn't know who this man was, especially because normally a pastor, a priest engages in some official rites like marrying people, baptizing them, burying them. And he didn't know this man that is involved with grave digging or that you used to be involved with grave digging. So that led us to wonder about both of them. How come the priest or the pastor doesn't know this man? And how come this man appeared at this time to us, not earlier, not later, but at this time, and just when we were wrapping up with this man is when the pastor shows up and starts questioning about us about a man that we would expect him to know. Anyway, uh, we'll leave that up to you to think about. Um, Brother Nick, do you want to add anything I might have missed on that? Yeah, he mentioned that uh, the people who came to dig out the bones was about 52 or 53 years ago. Yes. And he... he mentioned his age is like 76 and yes 76. yeah so it's a coincidence that he was 76 and uh, we found them he was there at the right time yes when we just were driving by yes at the right place <laughs> yeah with the right information <laughs> <laughs> yes i mean what are the chances that we would meet somebody who used to dig the graves and has all that information used to dig the graves, you know, 52 years ago when he was in his mid twenties, that, that was, that was quite, quite something, um, you know, seemed to have been some activity from above, if I would put it that way, in my opinion. Um, yes. Uh, that was not just a chance meeting, but probably a divine meeting. All right. Uh, anything else, Brother Nick, before I move on? Okay. There's, there's, also, there's also evidence mm -hmm. of pine or is it cypress trees that are found here as well. Yes, cypress. These are also mentioned, these are also mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in the Testament of Abraham mm. as well. Mm. Mm. So it's important. And, and where we are standing under the because I asked him, what tree is this? And he told me, this is an oak tree. Yes. It was right next to the mill. And yes. that mill used to have a well yep. inside. So, yep. so but it's it's a very coincidental. And I, I don't think it's, it's just any coincidence. It's all been rearranged for us yes. to meet in there with all these factors, mm -hmm. especially the evidence from the creature. You read from Genesis 13, from 12 to 23, you see all these things which are there. Yes. Thank you, uh, thank you for the reminder about the oak trees, because that was one of the things we mentioned as a criteria, you know, the oak trees. And I remember very clearly asking him, uh, what tree is this? And he was quick to say, this is an oak tree. And, and I looked around, I could see a few others, which I think I captured in another video we'll watch here. All right, let me move on to the next uh, image here so this is another old image uh, actually it's the same one we looked at before i put it back here so that we could talk about those cypress trees or pine trees that you're talking about i'm not sure which one is which but it's one of those this tree here from the old picture uh, that we saw before all right i'll go to the next one this is a video that i recorded it's just going to give you an orientation of that space, which has the water mill um, as well as, yeah, it has the water mill as well as that general green area. So this is the water mill from way back then. Of course, it was connected to the water, the stream down here. That's the water mill. And then they have the rocks over there. Notice this big posts down here. Oops, I 
I don't know why it stopped, but I'll, I'll play it again. That's the water meal. Actually, and I think it just index over there. Yeah. Notice this big posts down here. So before it proceeds, I want to highlight those rocks in the middle there. Um, those rocks have not just gone into that formation by themselves. <laughs> Notice the others are strewn around there. And you can take uh, a look at this rocks. There are other images online as well as the ones we have here. Those rocks seem to have been arranged by a human or by somebody uh, or something. Yes, they're very big rocks, but we know that even Abram had a lot of people with him. If you remember the story when he went to fight and recover his nephew Lot, he went with a troop of about 300 plus people or a group of over 300 people. So he had the resources and the people that he needed if he needed to put together an altar like this. And of course, when he was preparing his sacrifices, he needed to prepare those by some place where he had access to water. There's water streaming here. He needed to wash them and prep them and then put them on the altar. And this does match that. This floor here is also very flat. It could be a threshing floor which we did not even mention as part of the criteria, but uh, even today in many African settings, people will bring their harvest here, their corn, their beans, and they pretty much just stamp on them or beat them with some sticks. That's the process of threshing the grain out of the plant. Um, that could be a threshing floor. And especially that rock, Pay attention to that. There's more of these oak trees, of course. All right, I'll finish this. And then. All right. And if I may add, sure. you know, in an African setting, or if you had animals and you are slaughtering them, you don't tend to slaughter them out in the in the full sun. You slaughter them in the shade. Mm -hmm. And because of also because of flies and things like that. And you, you normally tend to, to, to lay some things, whether it's leaves of a tree, so as you slaughter the, the blood doesn't go up and uh, you know, it doesn't mess around the places. But usually that's the case. So you must have been close to water, some place with this some shade and things like that. Yep. And we have an image here of a large oak tree. And right in the middle, uh, below the oak tree, are three people. Um, you can see, but the point here is the presence of those large oak trees. Um, and there, there's one adult and two children, I think, standing under that tree. Um, and this we got from the University of Southern Carolina website. And I'll go to the next one, which is another image also showing you more of those trees. Um, it's important that you have vegetation and trees because if you're going to have animals, they need the supporting environment, whether it's the oak trees or, or the vegetation. All right. And here again is another image of that section. And the top up here is where we have those graves, uh, the cemetery that um, these guys had. So let me keep moving. Uh, this is another image. Um, it's talking about more trees and the rocks surrounded by plants. Um, yep, just what we've been emphasizing. All right, I will move to this one. This is a little video that I took of the surrounding area. Uh, let's take a look. This is Mamre, Cape Town. This is the old Moravian station. The big tree like you see like this one in the middle of the picture is an oak tree and this here is another oak tree you and that there, there is another oak tree and here Just behind a bit is some huge rock formation sorry nick 
just go back to your right there. Just pause there for a second. Okay. For example. So if you notice, if you notice below the rocks, there's a vegetation that's there. This vegetation is what you call reeds. Yes. So they are found in the this is what you would tend to have when people were crossing the night, okay? Yes. And not the red sea. This yes. is the reeds. Some type of reeds become reddish in color uh, when they mature. So this yeah. is found in streams where you have water. Fresh water. Of water. You don't get, yes, fresh water, not salty water. Yes. So this you can see the, 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 thickness, the thickness of how you tell mature trees is also the gut of the, the, the tree and also the leaves and the corn. So the leaves, the, the maturity of the leaves is one, the type of leaves, the size of leaves is one way to tell maturity of the plant. And also how much it spread itself, you can tell. So these trees are mature. And a grove is, is, is uh, described as having trees with more than 150 years plus. Mm. And the thing that you need to notice with oak trees, oak trees have a communication system mm. that uses the roots. So, mm. and the oak trees which are found here are certain species. Uh, people could argue, oh, we have oak trees which were imported. Well, these ones are specific to this area and they are not important or found like these are found mostly Western Cape of Southern Africa. And the important thing to note about the communication system of the roots is that when one tree notices that a tree is suffering, let's say it's got an infection or a fungi or a disease, the other trees send it support of nutrients. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the communication system with oaks, and you can research more about it. Uh, someone said uh, this uh, occurred in uh, what was it? The movie uh, Lord of the Rings that people used to see. Ah. The trees used to communicate. Yes. So Interesting. Just to recap, yeah, brother Ray said that. that Thank it's you. Important just to note the trees are closed, and when the scripture said. Abraham was sitting at the tent of his house, right? Resting, mm -hmm. right? Resting outside the tent of his house. Mm -hmm. so where would he be resting? He wouldn't be resting under full sun. He would be resting under the shade of a tree. So yes. then he would see someone coming, mm -hmm. then he would approach. Them. So you look at it and also take notice, a closer look at these rocks, the ones that are arranged. Yes. The scripture says, he built an altar. Yes. So it means those rocks had to be brought in and put together. Mm -hmm. You can notice even the tips of those rocks are darker mm -hmm. than the other bottom part. So yeah, that, that's just important. Thank you. And above it, somewhere in the middle of the picture there, is what appears to be like some kind of I think it's labeled as a trading or station or something like that. But you can see there's a cemetery. There's clearly a cemetery in the middle there. And we'll be going to check it out soon and see what it's like. All right. So next, uh, we'll just quickly go through some of the rest of the Moravian station and the buildings there. Uh, just taking some pictures. Uh, just to tell yeah. you, show you that we were actually there. So I'm not going to go into the details of what is what. But anyway, um, so these are just pictures of that station as we were driving through so that we can go check out the cemetery and the area there. Uh, this is perhaps the shop. Uh, that's me right there in the picture. Uh, so we're not just pulling pictures from the internet. <laughs> um, all right, that's what they call the personage, uh, according to that map that they had. Oh, I didn't notice there was actually a little dog on the right here at the bottom. See it right there. <laughs> All right. And then this is what I believe was a church. And yeah, we took a picture. Let's see, Brother Nick is in the car over there. And Sister Special was also in the car. And there's more buildings in the background. 
And these are other pictures. The one on the left is one that we took and you can see that plaque that, or that plaque that we took um, and they put it on this rock that on the right here has an oak tree. Might have been that same oak tree that is now on the ground and cut. Might have been this same oak tree. This picture on the right is from the 1800s. Um, but this instruction or information. So the the yeah. pine tree is the middle next to the big rock there. Yeah. And uh, I think they even left it there. It's still the same one. They just cut off the branches and it's still the same one that's lying there for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting picture here of a black woman wearing some simple European clothing. Uh, we can tell from the apron that she's wearing that she was probably a worker for somebody. Um, she's standing in front of a bush at the side of the house. That bush is evidence of vegetation and fatness of the land. All right, this is another view of what they call, I think, the long house as we were driving out. Um, I think that was the shop from a di different angle. You can see the plaque on the right there. And this was the backside of the compound, I think, as we were about to exit. And then we drove up the hill. And this is what I was seeing from a distance, this curvature. When I translated this on Google Translate, it means, it's written in Dutch. It means I am the resurrection and the life, or that resurrection and the life. Um, that's just what the locals prefer to have on there, of course. So this is an image of... Uh, the cemetery, and I'm just putting it here to give you an orientation. So the Moravian church and the Moravian campus is on this side. The green space is down here on the bottom right. You can see the rocks where we had, we were looking at the rocks and all that and the altar. And so we drove around this Moravian station and came up uh, towards the bottom right here in front of that station, in front of that cemetery. The sign that we just saw in the previous image is at the front on the right here where I'm placing my cursor. And then we drove up behind the cemetery and we were trying to identify the area um, where there's more stuff. Now, we managed to drive the car a little bit into some of these shrubs, but we could not go any farther. Uh, but we were at a point somewhere around here where we could see a huge rock the one pointed by this blue arrow. And that is the huge rock in the middle of the image here. Um, it's very common in Africa, especially in older times, that you would bury people next to a landmark that was easily identifiable by future generations. Uh, a landmark such as a huge rock like this. Um, we could not get into the cemetery. It was uh, out of bounds and fenced. So we thought to just drive around it and see what we could see. Um, and I, I'll show you uh, in the next image and video uh, what this cemetery looked like as we were driving down uh, at the bottom here. It will be on our left. Brother Nick, you got an, anything to add over here? Yes, you. I just want to refresh the viewer's uh, attention or memory. When the old man was pointing towards the hill he was referencing to behind where you behind the cemetery where you have this blue arrow is where the portion of old bones started from you, the portion of where they have the cemetery uh, the recent one you can see there's even a difference of color so the old bones started from where you you see this blue arrow going backwards. And there's also a groove of trees and quite a number of, of other rocks in there as well. So this is where he was alluding to when he was pointing his crutch. Mm. And also, um, before I forget, there was an image where we showed you at the beginning and there was a, a steeper hill than this one. So this is the hill we were talking about. Um, the image we were showing you was from taken from likely this uh, eastern side or right side, uh, the old image, and you would see a more steep hill um, than what this hill looks like today based on what we saw. 
um, or what you've seen in some of these videos where we're showing you the heel at the background. I don't know what happened to the heel, but it definitely is a lot more leveled uh, than it was uh, in the 1800s when those pictures were taken. I don't know whether there were caves in that hill that got leveled out. I, I don't know. I'm just saying it looks different. It's not the same hill. All right. Um, yeah, and, and people can look at my background image. It's the image of that hill. Yes, so you thank see you. Yes. How the elevation is like. That's you can the... see at the back, the elevation. You can see how a bit steep. You can see it, it had like a ravine in there. So there is a lot that has been changed, but the Most High has kept some things for us to find. <laughs> yep. So now we'll go to the next image. So this is the grave site on our left, and we're driving down that road that I showed you uh, that would be in this section here. And we're driving as if we're driving. We're actually driving back after we had checked out that place and seen the rock. Uh, I'm going to play a video of the, that will mostly show you what's on the left here. This is a graveyard, the more recent one. Because then you can see the oaks. This is the Oaks of Mamre. This is yeah, like a very important version of study and study Field to show yourself approved. And this you is see, like beyond. this is important. You see that windmill? Because mm -hmm. in the here, the oaks, mm -hmm. there were wells. There were wells, and there's water yeah. at the bottom. That's why there were wells there. Yeah, but remember. All right. So that was as we were driving back, um, leaving Mamre. And Again, the emphasis on the trees, the water, um, the oaks is what uh, we were pointing out there. And now I'm going to go to another video. This is as we are driving from Mamre back towards Cape Town. And Sister Speci, special girl, uh, she got some revelations as we were driving back. And, you know, anyway, let's listen. Let's go talk to him. Yeah. I didn't know that time. It was being hurried so that maybe this minister doesn't come. come. Because yeah, you see, when he came, yes. eh? yeah. he came with a with a very a very gay police attitude. attitude. Then yeah. he realized. Then he started talking to us different. And I like asked his like, oh, this is property. Then I'm like giving the guy. So like I have seen the guy, you know, got concerned and okay, we went to check on him. And he's like, oh, are you from out there? <laughs> I think at first the minister was wondering, okay, how do I handle these guys? You know, they don't look like they're doing anything crazy, you know, they're just talking to an old man. And here he's seeing me carrying food, you know. Yeah. So he tones down a little bit, you know. But yeah, he came asking me like, as if like, hey, yeah, what are you doing here? Kimbangu told you they're gonna get oh that's another aspect you know he told you they took the bones and they left and Kimbangu said that we will that it will be revealed all of those hidden things yes in yes. the scrolls and now yes. including everything. the bones and everything the bones, that's yeah. hidden yes everything that was taken yep. will be revealed yep. and taken back yeah wow that's really full circle <laughs> I mean the guy that, came I asked the guy so why was the, what was the original name before it was called uh, Mamre? Oh, I asked him what name did the Khoisan call this place? And I asked him, okay, why did these guys come in here? And they just came here because the Khoisan were here. The Khoisan were in many other places. You know, why did they settle here? But okay, so this is not a cool, you know, yeah, I think it's there. It's gonna go like this and seven. 
So uh, two, two things, there are actually three things I want to emphasize. First of all, Brother Nick started out by realizing or getting a revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. That when we got to that property in Mamre and he went and started talking to the, the, the old man who used to be a grave digger, uh, he realized that he didn't know it, but he was being led to talk to that man first and foremost, and he spent a lot of time with him while Speshi and I were walking around and doing other things and looking at taking other videos and pictures. But Brother Nick realized while we were driving back that he had been led there by the Most High to speak to that man before the pastor of the town or the minister, as he called himself, would come by and start telling us to get out. That's what Brother Nick started out talking about in the video here. And then Sister Speshi also got a revelation <laughs> that, you know, uh, the people we had met in uh, Bantu Tokoista Cape Town uh, who had been given a revelation to give us about these sites will be uncovered and these truths that are hidden will be uh, revealed. Um, this was part of that revelation. You know, all these little things that were happening that we did not plan for were through divine providence, or as you call it, providence. Um, I was talking about in this ride about the way when I asked the pastor who came to try and talk, to, talk us out of the place, I asked him, you know, why did the missionaries come here? And he just said they came here to minister to the Khoisan people. But when I pressed him and asked him, why here? Why not elsewhere? The Khoisan were in other places. He didn't seem to have an answer for that, you know, but the evidence, the evidence is obvious. It tells us why they came here. Brad, Nick, anything to add on that? Or do we wrap it up with the next slide? So I guess, I guess this checks all those six points as yeah. evidence. There's one more. Not, not before. The, yes. And, and I think it's important just to mention mm -hmm. Abraham's uh, ancestral land in, in terms of Abraham inheritance of the land. Mm -hmm. It's so important because it covers not only just the Christian uh, people's faith, mm -hmm. but we are talking about the Abrahamic faith, mm -hmm. the Muslim, Islam, Muslims, the Sunni, the Shiites, they all believe in Abraham. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about 4.5 to 5 billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. This is where Abraham was buried. This is where Abraham buried his wife. Yeah, this is yeah. where the patriarchs are buried. So, yeah. as you think about that, just think about four point five billion people should know where Abraham is buried. Yeah, and this last image here is highlighting uh, Hebron. On the image on the left, we show you Mamre, which is where we've just been touring in the video. And in the middle of the slide here, you see Hebron as it is presented in. Uh, the Blue Letter Bible, pronounced as Hebrone or Hebrone. And this is present-day Gaberon in Botswana. And the scriptures were talking about that this burial place was in Hebron. Now, think of it this way. It's 1,400 kilometers, you know. Um, but think of it this way. This whole southern region that you see, of Africa in this map. When you look at the Apartheid Museum and the history of South Africa, you will find that this whole region was called the Cape of Good Hope. And we're talking only 200 years ago. If they were calling this whole region Cape of Good Hope, way before that, when there were much more fewer, there were more, there were fewer people on the on the continent it is not unlikely that they were calling this whole region Hebron during Adam, Abraham's time, um, or as a province or as a country. Maybe it was just called Hebron. Maybe that was half of it. Maybe that was three quarters of it. And they ended up now labeling one small piece of it. They put on the dot there as Hebron. So the point here is that the Hebron that is mentioned in the scriptures is in this is is the larger area within which you find Mamre Cape Town. 
Brother Nick, anything to add on that? Or do we call it a wrap? No, there is a proof, there's the evidence. All right. So thank you all who've been watching. Send us your comments. Let us know what you think. And we appreciate your time today. Thank you.